Alright guys, what is up? My name is Kermit Plays Minecraft. I am joining McLaffy Taffy today for something a little different. So, something that Ryan does every Wednesday is something called story time. And I was listening to a couple of his things and I was thinking, man, this would be kind of cool to do just because, like, it's easy to record, lets your subscribers know a little bit more about you and kind of just, if you have cool stories, you can tell them. And so, I have a cool story that recently happened to me and Ryan has a couple as per usual his life is fucking weird and crazy and he does cool stuff to and be totally fair i don't still do it every week you're going to get people's hopes up and then i'm going to have unrealistic expectations placed on me so so Mc ryan is actually starting to do it every other day now so you should just bug him every <laughs> single video total dick. <laughs> <laughs> all right so today's video or story time since this is the first one episode one of story time um the thing that happened to me re revolves around fire so earlier this morning i asked ryan if he had any stories to do with fire and he said yeah sure i can throw in a couple stories about my dad about blah blah blah, blah whatever he wants to do and so i'm going to start off with mine which is a couple days ago i was at a bonfire in a party and we're trying to light this bonfire. It's like huge, huge pile of wood, right? It's like there's logs, branches. This guy like lives on a ranch. So it's just like yard waste stuff. And he's like, be right back. I'm going to go get something. He comes back with like a gasoline can, like a big one. And he's just like pouring it on. He's like, I got the gasoline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, he pours on a stick. He lights the stick on fire, puts the stick on the fire. Nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go get a bigger stick. And he's like, Pulls the gas in that stick and puts in the fire. He's like, oh, fuck, it's not working. And he's like trying to go find matches and shit. Like, okay, guys, I got this. And I go up, I pull a lighter out of my pocket. I bend over and I light it. And it fucking already, blows up in my face. I already like where this is heading. Dude, my eyebrows got singed. Like, I fucking like saw it blow up my face. <laughs> I jumped back. I'm like, fucking took off my hat, threw it on the ground, like patting my head down. I thought I'm like on fire. My hair is singed. Like, I, I tweeted a picture about it. I'll probably put it into the video. Oh, that's my, badass. My hair is singed. My eyebrows are singed. Even my eyelashes are, like, singed in half. So, question. Are you still toting around, like, the, the burnt hair smell? Yeah, dude. Like, the entire night I smelled like burnt hair. Oh, that's awesome. You smelled like a perm. Oh, my God. Oh, perms are gnarly, man. <laughs> <sighs> Like, my little bits of my shirt were burnt, too. Like, you know that plasticky stuff that's on your shirt? A little oh, bit yeah, of that yeah, was yeah. melted off. Oh, God. Did, like, like, did it hurt? Did it actually, it, like... It didn't hurt at all. Like, I was a little bit toasty afterwards. Kind of like a, a little bit of sunburnt. But other than that, like, I'm fine. Like, everything's perfectly in shape. Like, a little bit of my arm hair is gone, but that's about it. Like miniature one line story time, I actually did something kind of similar to that where I was in a theater production where a flame would shoot up out of the center of the stage and one day before the show started, I thought I would be cute and I had the stage manager fire up the flame and I was going to light my cigarette off of it. Oh my God. So I put my head on the side of the stage with the cigarette above the flame, but it came out like way larger than I had anticipated. And so your just whole face was engulfed. Exactly the same thing, man. Yeah, that's exactly... Like like, Lex Luthor in the front, but mullet in the rear. <laughs> party in the front. No. Business in the front, party in the back. That's right. Business in the front, party That's in the right. back. Okay. Um, I don't know, man. Like, just seeing that fire just, like, come up. Like, I, I can still, like, look back. And I can, like, just see how the fire escalated from my lighter to the log <laughs> to the huge gasoline <laughs> fireball in my face. Oh. <sighs> That's awesome. Out of curiosity, just just because these are the kinds of things, like where from whence did you draw the inspiration for this story time? Like who came up with a, a big sort of like, so Kermit, did you ever almost die in a fire? No, I was, well, like if you get lit on fire, I feel like I have to share it with the world. That's true. That's so true. So kids, do not try this at home. If you find a big ranch and a bunch of people are watching, maybe go for it. Don't tell your parents I said that. Um, I don't know, man. Don't, don't light gasoline fires with a lighter maybe it's one of those because long lighters you know those candle lighters try that one 
it's funny because part of me feels like if the subscribers come to us as like miniature YouTube celebrities and they say, oh yeah, tell us a story about you involving fire. I think they expect it to be like Spider-Man-y, like the time that we saved all those nuns from that burning orphanage. Oh dude, that's next story time. And unfortunately, yeah, like all, all the stories are just like, com like any stories that have to do with fire normally have to do with, so one time my dumb ass. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so one time I was a little out of it. And right. I may or may not have blown up the neighbor's house. Oh, that, that, I guess that that works as a natural transition in, into our in, into I say our stories, my stories, and uh, ultimately Ow. the stories that I have to tell. I'll, I'll tell mine first, and then I'll follow it up with my father's because of the simple fact that I'm not going to outdo Dad. You yeah, guys, it's who hard have, to do that. Exactly, you guys who have listened to story time with me before know that my dad. Uh, it, it makes Chuck Norris cry. So, uh, for those of you who may or may not have been keeping up, my dad was diagnosed with bladder cancer this last year. Uh, but bladder cancer is not badass enough to take him, so he has fought it off <laughs> with his fist, mostly with his fists and his anger. Some with some with treatment. The doctors say that might have played a hand. I say it was a rage. Uh, so we'll we'll end with his story. I feel like with a triumphant return of story time in any form or shape, there has to be some sort of dad contribution. I'll start with mine because in comparison, it's just it's a it's a pussy story compared yeah. to dad's story. We gotta end with the best. Exactly, you end with a bang. Mine uh, ironically had to do with a, a Fourth of July story. I had a buddy living in Idaho, and it, the the theme of these two stories is once upon a time, once upon a time when laws were more lenient and you could get away with more shit that involved arson, essentially. <laughs> My buddy Andy and I had a collection of bottle rockets, and we were using them the way you were intended by God to use bottle rockets, which is to shoot them directly at moving vehicles. And so we had literally a glass Coke bottle, and we were using it uh, and playing like army, like playing like, oh, rocket launcher, oh, yeah. take out the enemy tank. And one of the bottle rockets skipped off the hood of a moving car. Uh, so first of all, we were really like nervous about the fact that we'd make contact. We never intended in a million years to actually hit a car. But here we are now trying to think about whether or not we're going to have to explain ourselves to this driver who wants to get out and beat us with a tire iron. And we can't blame him. And secondly, it skips off and it goes into a borrow pit. Now, I, I don't know if you're familiar with borrow pits in certain parts of the country or the world, but they're essentially pits on the uh, like ditches on the side of the road that are usually filled with like tall, high grass. It's yeah. like an unkempt part of the highway system where you just, you know, if something falls off your car and into that area, you can just kind of assume that it's gone because yeah, you it's, have to it's where you, it out. It's where you put all your like grandma's chairs and sweaters and stuff. <laughs> That's exactly, yeah. Well, uh, so, you know, we're living in southern Idaho. Uh, and it's all high grass. It's all high desert. And so this bottle rocket skips into sagebrush and dry grass and starts, we started a range fire. And we started to try to control it by just like stomping on it. And we're like, oh, ha ha, laugh it off. And it just spreads. And it spreads. And there starts to become that moment of cold dread and panic where you're just like, holy shit, I think we may have just started a natural disaster. <laughs> and so Un Unnatural disaster. Well, I mean, when the cops asked, there was a lightning strike on this clear July day, and <laughs> we, being good citizens, had decided to try to stop it. But at this point, we, we were running back and forth to, like, his garden hose, which is all of, like, 150 yards away. So we're sweating our asses off just trying to transport, like, palmfuls and buckets full of water, and it's not enough. Oh, excuse me. So eventually, we go and get, like... Uh, blankets and we soaked the blankets and we started like the lone smart thing we did all day was to get these blankets and go and soak them and just beat the fire out until eventually we we squashed it but it had burned like a football field like a full acre of his neighbor's yard but it was creeping up on his house and the guy wasn't home so we we're just like it's much easier to explode mm, it's much easier to explain a big patch of dead burnt grass than it is to explain, explain the the smoldering house. pile of rubble that used to be the guy's home yeah that would suck so, yeah, I guess, like, the big thing about that was just the terror, like, the, the cold wash of fear that just drenched us the moment we realized that this thing might be completely out of our control. Yeah. Uh, as for the dad story, I told Kermit this one before we came on the air. My dad lived in an even more lenient time where just kids will be kids Dude, was... Back in the day. ...was a defense for when you did shit that was straight up criminal and you just didn't feel like serving the time. <laughs> Like that when your defense was, eh, kids will be kids. And you're like, oh, shit, I can't great. believe we pulled that card. That's like diplomatic immunity in I the know. 1960s. Oh, sorry, man. I'm I just, you know, I'm 17. I'm like, sorry, bro. You can't take me to jail. I'm yeah. 17 and fucking stupid. Yeah. 
So apparently my dad just for whatever reason, I mean, I've had I've had high school rival rivalries. I've had stories about going to town on high school rivals and and just doing stupid shit to lash out at them. But dad took it to the next level where he and a couple of friends actually loaded up the five gallon drums with gasoline and went from high school to high school burning our high school's initials JHS into the 50 yard line of like six rival high schools and they only got caught because they started to call each other and say hey we've heard from other schools that some assholes going around burning JHS into into the lawns of all of our football fields and he got caught and a cop pulled him over and here he is with like matches and gallons and gallons of gasoline <laughs> in the back of his car burning rival schools and because it's the 60s all he gets is like a slap on the wrist and a hey you have to pay for this and help resod the fields and I was telling Kermit at 17 years old, he even had a couple of six packs in the car, and he said the only thing that saved him on that was the fact that they were dusty. So the cop was like, "Oh, well, obviously you weren't drinking these tonight while you were driving around committing arson." Oh, you guys! I know. Like, if if we were to do that, there'd be arson charges, treason. Straight up, like, yeah, straight like, up felony, and off to Gitmo or the FBI's most wanted overnight. Launched in a pod into low orbit. I don't like it's. I it, yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a the time that I can't recon reconciliate, like logic doesn't exist in this bubble that's called the early 1960s, I suppose. Oh man, fun suckers. They're all fun suckers. It's true. So yeah, holy shit, I've just done this story time for like the first time in a month. That felt good. Yeah, dude, I think because of your dad's story. Now, we're going to end it here. It's going to be short, short and sweet. Um, but from what I've heard from your dad's story, it got me thinking about the uh, cop interactions that I've had personally. Now, for you subscribers, you guys let us know or let me know, since this is, I guess, my channel. I don't know if you guys want Ryan in here. Let me know about that too. But also, tell me what you guys want me to talk about, like story time, scripts, like what the prompt is, because the prompt today was like fire, like fire situations. What Do you guys want to hear about like cops or crazy like fights or girls or... I don't know this times primeval. This is very. We want fire stories. We want sex stories. We uh, want fire okay. stories. Let's talk about like the greatest flower I've ever picked. No, dude, the primeval stories are good. Yeah, that, that's what that's that what I'm saying. Like that shit resonates on a on a on a hunter gatherer sort of level. Yeah, I know your instincts, man. It that's right. Riles up your instincts. Like, oh yeah, let's go light shit on fire. Yeah. That hits man at its essence. Oh, straight up. But um, yeah, let me guys let me know what you uh, want to hear next, and if you guys like this. If not, then I just won't do it. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, also, leave a like for the cat's new collar. You probably heard him in the background, I'm giving him a good shake. He's. I have like, I don't even know how to say it. Pistachio shells all over the place because I have like big bag of pistachios, and I just didn't have a garbage can. So like. They're like all over my desk. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So the cat's been playing with them. <laughs> Speaking of living like cavemen. Oh, dude. Just, they're so good. I can't even say it. Fuck. Okay, pistachios? well. Pistachios? Pistachios. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's <laughs> it. Um, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining and listening. Okay. I think that's, right. that's how you ended, right?